So we have Mary Griffin from Virginia Tech joining us now. Uh, Mary, walk people through how you figured out your diagnosis originally. So it was the start of fall, my sophomore year. And I was like, it was such an exciting time because my freshman year, my first college experience got cut short, obviously, because of COVID. So I was really excited to come in fall and like have like a restart and just had that mental reset of just coming in excited and just not taking any opportunity for granted. So I was working really hard. Um, we didn't play any games in the fall. So we did a lot of training. We did a lot of like practicing in groups and pods and such things like that. So we were doing even more conditioning than we usually do. So it was one time during this conditioning drill in the fall where we were just doing like sprints and jog backs. And like, I'm the type of person, I, I do usually do well on our runs. Like I pass our run tests, like I'm fine with those. And on this particular day, I was like sprinting down, jogging back, and we had to do five like sets. And on the second rep, I was like, something's not right. Like there was this horrible pain on my right upper side and something like I've never experienced before. And but as like an athlete, I think a lot of athletes are just kind of like hard on themselves and just kind of like push through it. Like you're totally fine. Like you're don't be weak, like anything like that. So I tried to keep going, but by the start of the third one, I was like, there is something wrong. This is not normal. So I run off to my athletic trainer. I'm like on my like hands and knees, like crouching down. I'm like, I'm like, this is not right. This is not right. Um, sat out the rest of practice. She like monitored me. Um, nothing like it started going down a little bit. Like the pain was starting, it lingered, but it wasn't anything like terrible unless I was like actively running in that moment. Um, so I just kind of like brushed it aside. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm fine. Like I'll practice like the next day. Like that was just weird. But my trainer and our team doctor really pushed me to get a CT scan because it was on my right side. So they were like, let's just check out your appendix. Like let's just be safe. Like, why not? And I was just kind of thought that was dramatic of them. I was like, I'm fine. Like totally like we need to chill out, but they were like, no, let's do it. So I got a CT scan. Um, I think the next day and I practiced for the next like whole week. And then that Friday, the CT scan results came in and I had a meeting after practice with my doctor and trainer. And before the, um, before the appointment, I literally like went up to my trainer. I was like, oh my gosh, like, am I dying? And she kind of laughed or she didn't laugh. She did not laugh. Yeah. And like, she was just like, we'll talk about it. And I was like, wait, that was like a joke. Like, why aren't you laughing? Like, so I go into the appointment and they told me I have a tumor in my stomach, like on my left side. And, um, and that was just something I was not expected to hear. And they were like, the tumor is like size of a lacrosse ball, like about so. And then the first thing that came into my mind, I go, is it cancerous? And they didn't have the answers at that point. So the next step was getting a biopsy done um, to test the tumor to see what it is. So I got the biopsy done about a week later, but on the same day of my biopsy, I actually tested positive for COVID as well. So I was just so distraught. I was like, I'm not going to be able to find out what this tumor is. Like, I don't think they can do the, bi the biopsy still. Like I have COVID, like they're not going to open me up. I'm not going to be around doctors with COVID. But luckily they were able to pull through and I had to just wear a shield. They wore hazmat suits, like the whole ordeal. Um, so they tested the biopsy and while in isolation, three days later, I was on a Zoom call similar to this with my doctor and my trainer came to my house and she sat, we sat outside like six feet apart, the whole thing. And they told, and my mom was on the phone, like on FaceTime with me. And the doctor told me that it, I had cancer. And I like hung up the phone with him, talked to my mom for like five minutes, talked to my trainer, and then just immediately had to go back into my room in isolation. And it was the craziest time in my life. I remember walking into the house, my roommates were like in the kitchen and he turned to me, I was like, I have cancer. And they were like, whoa, like what? And like, none of us were expecting that. Like my mom was not expecting that. And like, she was supposed to be there to hear the results, but because I had COVID, like she wasn't able to be there. And that was really hard for us, like not yeah. to be together. And just for her to hear that, like, is so difficult. Like her youngest kid has cancer. Like no one wants to hear that. And like, the circumstances just kind of made it worse and like went into isolation and just got a thousand calls, a thousand messages, but never really interacted with someone until a week after I got the news.
What, I mean, at 18, 19, 20 years old, when you hear the word cancer, it never really pops into mind for most n people that this could happen. Like, when you hear the word cancer as something that's happening to you, what goes through your mind? Right. Like, I always say that I think every single person on this earth is somehow impacted by cancer. And uh, it's usually like a grandmother, a grandfather, like a friend, a, a cousin, like something like that. But you're never thinking it's going to be you until it actually happens. Like never in my life, I would have guessed this would happen to me at such a young age, like maybe down the road, like when I'm 80 years old, like maybe that would have happened. But at 19, I think it's just crazy. And I think it's eye opening to see how things can really change overnight. And like your life can change in a second. Like, and I think it's something that I just kind of lived a normal life and up until that moment and then realized that like this stuff can happen and it can happen to anyone and it happened to me and I just think it was really came in as a shock because it was just so unexpected. So uh, throughout this process I know you had been close to Stanford's uh, Marcy Salvatore who also ha has her own fight with cancer ongoing Walk people through how you knew each other back in high school, kind of had drifted apart a bit, and then obviously reconnected going through this together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we played two years of high school lacrosse together, and, like, we were we got along so well. Like, we were friends. We have really similar personalities. Like, we're outgoing, fun, like, quirky people. And um, after we both went to college, we kind of just, like, didn't stay in touch as much. Like, nothing bad happened, but we just didn't keep that connection between us and obviously I had heard about her diagnosis because a lot of people were posting for her on social media and I like just texted her I was just like I'm thinking of you like all that all that stuff and so when I found out there was a tumor in my stomach uh, my mom actually like suggested she was like why don't you reach out to Marzi like to see like if she has any advice and I was like I don't want to do that until unless I have unless this is cancerous like I would hate for to be like I found a tumor and then not it be cancerous and like just like kind of like not relate to her a, a lot but um when I did find out it was cancer that night I texted her for the first time like we had talked I like sent her that one message and she replied like a little bit but this was the first time we really talked and I texted her I was like hey like when's a good time I, I can talk to you about something like I want to call you and she was just like I actually like just um had gotten treatment so I'm not feeling the best like can it be like a couple days in a couple days like but what is this about and I was just kind of like oh like I just found out I have a rare form of cancer like I don't know what's going on between us Roland Park girls but like I'm in it with you and she immediately FaceTimed me and was just like what is happening like asked me like what the steps are and stuff like that and just kind of like was like explaining like this is what's going to happen if when you get a PET scan this is what's going to happen if it spreads like and she was just like telling me all these things and it was kind of really refreshing to hear someone relate to like terms like we were speaking in terms that I if you asked me a year ago if I knew what a biopsy was I have no idea but now we both know and we were just able to relate in that manner and like she was just like, this is what's gonna happen. This is how some people are gonna react. A lot of people they even talked to in 10 years are gonna try to like contact you. And so she was just like, so like refreshing to talk to and just so resourceful. And so like, it was just a, like a breath of fresh air, honestly. And just, it was just so, it's obviously I had a support system everywhere and like all my friends and family wanted to support me, but to actually have someone relate to it is a whole different story. Uh, absolutely. And it has to be such a, a huge help to have somebody to, to kind of bounce things off of. Uh, Mary, I think most people in the lacrosse world know the lime green and associate it with the Headstrong Foundation. You, you come up through youth tournaments and it's, it's all over the place in, in different events. But after going through what you've gone through, how do you think of Headstrong now? Yeah, so that's funny you say that. Like, I remember in high school, um, Game Hair Havoc went all over the place it was all over instagram people were posting pictures of them playing with their fun hairstyles and challenging their um, friends and teammates to show us your game hair and i remember i was tagged in one and they were like show your game hair and i was just kind of like what is this like what i was like what is this like foundation like uh, i was like this is fun like everyone has fun braids like that's cool and like you always heard about headstrong foundation and you always supported it but 
now to actually be in my shoes and to be the one that's impacted by it and affected by it and to see firsthand what they do for the people who are involved and what they're trying to do for their patients, I think it's just so incredible. And I think it gave me a whole new lens of what the Headstrong Foundation is. I think before this had happened to me, I just thought of it as another foundation that tried to find a cure for cancer, that tried to just fundraise for their cancer patients, but really they go out of their way to build that connection with every single person involved. And it makes the little cross community just, it's a big community, but a small community at the same time, but we all like come together and support and we're playing for something bigger than us, which I think is truly incredible. And I think it's just a good reminder that there are a thousand people that would kill to be in the position that we are in. And every single time we step out on the field, I know conditioning can be horrible. I know like one V ones are not my favorite thing, but to never take that for granted because I know how quickly things can change and how quickly like things can get taken away from you. So I think just having that new perspective and that inside scoop with what the headstrong foundation does, I think it's just so incredible. Yeah. I was just finishing up. What kind of perspective has it given you in terms of now when you have a chance to get out in the field it, it, it must feel like it's like this extra opportunity right yeah I think um I think a lot of athletes have learned this past year because of COVID that yeah. things can really change and nothing is guaranteed and I kind of picked up on that but I was only a freshman when all this was happening so I was like oh I have three more years like it's fine and then I uh, couldn't play in the fall but the same time I was diagnosed, like there was so much unknown and that the, we didn't know if I was going to ever step on the field again. We didn't know if it spread. We didn't know if I like would have played this year, if I could have played next year. Like we, there was just so much unknown. And I think a lot of people don't realize that there is so much unknown in the world and just like in our lives. And I think just pursuing that and just really just playing like, you have nothing to lose because we really don't. And I just think in three years when like I'm done and graduated, like I'm just going to look back and be like, I thank goodness I did not take anything for granted. And I hope a lot of people do not have to wait for something bad to happen to them. Like I unfortunately waited for COVID to cancel my season and cancer to cancel my fall. So really realize the um, position I'm in and just like it's such a unique and cool experience and just really start appreciating the people around you and my teammates and my coaches and just everyone that supported me during this time. Well, uh, Mary, thank you for sharing your story. Uh, we appreciate the time and uh, good luck as you continue with your health and uh, hopefully we'll catch up sometime down the road.